Let's talk about flow, specifically inspiratory flow in regards to volume control ventilation. So I'm going to draw a little symbol for flow here. So it's a V with a little dot over it, and I'll put an I for inspiratory flow. Now the components of inspiratory flow are my tidal volume and my inspiratory time. So all flow is, or inspiratory flow is, is how quickly I get the tidal volume in. So I could have the same tidal volume set, but for different respiratory rates, I need a different flow rate to get it in because my the time to get it in is either longer or shorter to maintain the same tidal volume. So when we're talking about volume control ventilation or, vol or volume control continuous mandatory ventilation, flow is going to be constant. It's not going to change based on patients' lung mechanics. If the resistance goes up or if the compliance goes down, my flow is always going to be the same. Now let's look at a ventilator screen. And on some ventilators you can set the inspiratory flow. But here is an example of a ventilator. And as you notice, we're in volume control. And if we look all this, over all the settings, we do not see a setting for an inspiratory flow setting. Some ventilators do have an inspiratory flow setting, and some do not. A common inspiratory flow rate setting would be for adult patients anywhere from 40 to 100 liters per minute. And this is for patients that are more spontaneously breathing. They need a more reactive flow or a mid to high inspiratory flows for that. So as, as I stated before, the components of for flow are, of course, my tidal volume and my inspiratory time. So I do have a tidal volume setting. However, there is no setting for inspiratory time. However, there is a setting for my IE ratio and a respiratory rate. So both of these two will affect my inspiratory time. And if we look around the screen, I'm just going to erase here, get all this other way. We can see this little smart window. So newer ventilators will have smart windows which will do the math for you. So I'm, if I manipulate one setting, say my IE ratio, uh, it's going to change my inspiratory time. So here's my inspiratory time measurement. You also can see here's my calculated flow rate down here, which is 17.4 liters per minute. So if I needed to change this flow rate, what I'd have to do is I could change um, two things. I could either change my tidal volume. However, since I'm in volume control ventilation, I probably do not want to change my tidal volume. I could also change my respiratory rate, since respiratory rate is a part of my inspiratory time. However, to change my flow, I'm going to have to manipulate my IE ratio. So if I want a to increase my inspiratory flow with my IE ratio, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to um, widen out the IE ratio. So if we start at a 1 to 2, we're going to have to go, say, to a, a 1 to 3 or a 1 to 4. 
and this would increase my inspiratory flow. Now here's another ventilator screen and if we look at this ventilator screen here's all the settings over here and if we look on here there is a setting for tidal volume of course there is not a setting for inspiratory time so there's no setting for inspiratory time at all however we do have a inspiratory time percent setting so this based on my respiratory rate setting is going to calculate an inspiratory time for me so we look at these ventilator settings it's broken down into the screen is broken down into this area is where is actually my settings and this area right here is my smart window or another smart window I was telling you about that will show you uh, changes or calculations based on your settings and as you can look down here is there is my inspiratory time so it doesn't figure out my flow rate for me but it shows you my inspiratory time so if I increase my percent or decrease my percent it's going to change my inspiratory time Now th this situation with inspiratory time percent, if I wanted to say increase my flow rate, I would have to actually decrease my inspiratory time percent and that would give me a faster flow rate if the patient needed it. Now why flow setting is so important is due to patient comfort and patient synchrony during spontaneous breathing or spontaneous efforts. So we have this other picture here. Here's another example. And this is volume control ventilation. And as you can see in this part of the screen, these are measurements. And this is my measured tidal volume. So this is what I have set. So I have a set tidal volume. My flow is going to be constant. and we can look at my flow waveform. So here's my flow waveform. My flow waveform is in red. It's this section right here. So that's where we're looking for at my flow. And as you notice, it's measured in liters per minute. And if you look at all the waveforms, they're all the same. They're all consistent. However, if I, know, if I need to know if my flow is adequate, in volume control ventilation, I actually want to look to my pressure waveform for flow asynchronies. So here's my pressure waveform in blue. And my pressure is going to change now. My pressure waveform, the shape and the look of it is going to change based on lung mechanic changes, work of breathing, and everything else. So if my flow rate's too fast, that can cause a lot of discomfort to the patient. It can cause increased resistance it can give me a higher peak airway pressure, I can have an increased peak airway pressure. And it, what it does is it shortens up my inspiratory time too, and I might have adequate alveolar filling. A flow rates that are too slow may cause discomfort also. So in this example, the patient's the flow rate is too slow. So if we look at my pressure waveform, I'm getting adequate pressure and now the patient starts to suck back. So the waveform should look like this if my flow is adequate, but as you notice, they're sucking back and my flow is inadequate. And this is called flow mismatch. So that's a 